Hi, I'm TJ. Welcome to Sale with TK's Cooking Time. Today we're going to make a true authentic Cajun dish that probably you don't know about if you follow us. Sauce Picard. Um, we're going to make a double batch today. I'm going to put in the description how to make the single batch. So, here we go. Here are all the ingredients. So, how many onions do uh, we need? Onions. You're going to need two cups of diced onions. Okay. You're going to need two cups of bell peppers. Okay. Um, you're going to use one to one half pound sausage. Now with the chicken, um, pretty much um, one to one half pounds. This was actually pre-seasoned with Tony Sashers, which we would recommend. This looks like breast. This looks like... That's pork back there. Pork. Okay. Yeah. So how many porks? Um, one to one, one and one half pounds of pork. Okay. Rotel. Um, today we're using two cans of Rotel. Sauce. Two cans of tomato sauce. We're using. Wait, there's more tomato sauce. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there's like five cans. Five cans of tomato sauce. Okay. <laughs> Bar bad. Two cans of tomato paste. Toy Sasher to flavor. Um, onion powder. Let me look on here. Sorry, does it say onion powder? I guess as going. Same thing with garlic powder. You're going to need. We're doing a big. Um, Butter roux, so we're just using two cups of butter today. Okay, and you need flour for the butter roux. And two cups of flour. And garlic. Garlic, probably a big dog. Remember, we gauge garlic with my love. So. so, for someone who has never had this before, how would you describe this to them? It's almost, it's pretty much our red sauce in the South, is the way I would put it. It's like, it's kind of like, like a, a red sauce gumbo. gumbo. Yeah, that's what I'm going through. We're going to do two different styles. We're going to do a, at the end, so you notice we got two different cast iron pots here. We're going to do one that's going to be chicken sausage, one that's going to be, one that's going to be sausage and pork. So actually, I'm okay. going to make all the juice in one pot, then we're going to separate everything. So let's get everything, get everything okay. heated up. Okay, do you have to use cast iron? Don't have to, but if you have it, I'd recommend it because cast iron. A Dutch works oven better. would probably Dutch work. Dutch oven, anything you got. For people in the north. Yes, I would agree. With okay, that. so we have quite the collection. We're gonna put all of this in the description for you, oh, so yes. you can follow along a little bit easier. But you ready to get started? Yes, let's get started. Okay, so you turned the cast iron pot on to what heat? Medium heat. Medium heat. So this is essentially got one to ten, so about five. So now we're gonna do all the butter. This butter has been softened a little bit. I don't think you are. <laughs> now we have on the show before made a flour butter, a flour and oil butter before. Uh, this is actually going to be what's called a butter roux, which is a lot thicker. You've made an oil roux, I don't know. Yeah, think oil roux. Yeah, I made an oil roux a while back, so I made two cups, of so two cups of flour. So one cup. One cup. And so you can kind of see because the butter starting to melt. Nope. No, actually, this because it will scrape the bottom. Right. Okay. I can actually stick it to a golden brown. Right. Slow cook it. It's gonna so, be nice and slow. Oh yeah. This and stuff, a lot of stirring. Yeah, this is something you want to stir a lot, mix it because it can burn easily, just like the other one. I want to scrape too because we got lots of little scrape here. And kind of So this, um, it's not a spoon, it has a flat edge. No, this is, this is more of a spatula. I have watched your dance. We have a big spatula that we can use for stuffing. Yeah. So we're going to check back in with you in about, about two minutes. Right. And see where we're at. So we're just melting, melting and stirring. Okay, so while roux is happening over here, in a separate pot, we are adding the onions and the bell peppers. We're going to start sauteing them down so they're not crunchy. 
So we have the temperature is on medium high. Their preferred spoon. Okay. All right. Do we need to add garlic or anything to this? We're gonna add garlic and then we'll put it back in. Okay. So these, we definitely just want to where they're not crunchy. The onions will be very translucent. Yes. So it's going to be a labor of love. We've got yes. roux going, butter roux in one side, onions and peppers in another. And this is something I always say is a roux. is something everybody needs to make because this is a base to almost any sauce you can do. I also have like a red sauce with Italian cooking, but roux is something like you go make a gravy and you start for roux. Um, anything, like I said, anything sauce wise, this is something you just need to do. This is actually my first time doing a butter roux. What? This is my first time doing a butter roux. I've it's never. Fine. It's fine, just let it go. Much sort of down will be just like so. Right. It's a labor of love. love. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are starting to sizzle. All right, so we're just going to continue leaven over here and we'll be back. We'll check in in about five minutes. Nice and slow. Okay, checking in. So our butter has melted. And again, this is something you want to pretty much keep stirring. We want like a dark caramel color. Right? Like if you ever seen a uh, a good Christmas praline, we kind of want that color. Also, I kind of want to film your shirt because you have like the best shirt right now. The light. There's no the lights out. You notice know, so I'm using this, and one thing the one good thing about cast iron is you can be a little more aggressive with your stirring. I'm like a non-stick where you know you kind of have to use something a little plastic -y. so you don't scratch it all up and get metal. Be e aggressive. <laughs> has got a little darker since last time we were over here. A couple of tablespoons of healthy garlic. amount of garlic. Saute garlic. Okay guys, welcome back. Now when your roux starts getting foamy like this, it means it's cooking. So this is when you really want to stay with it is because the color is about to change. So we've been, or this has been cooking for a good 20-ish yeah, minutes. A roux like, we is, haven't recorded the whole time, but it's been about 20 minutes. Yeah, this so is definitely a labor of love right now. But this is, one of the reasons why cages don't last long is we did throw four sticks of butter. And two cups of flour right here, so. But this is the base. Like I said, any Cajun meal, a roux is your base. Yeah. So we're looking for foam. We're looking for foam. Then we're looking for this. Like I said, we want a deep caramel color. But as I do, if you notice, I'm taking this so I can kind of scrape the bottom. We don't want anything burning in this whatsoever. What? You gotta get the gradu off the bottom. You gotta get the gradu off the bottom. Gradu. The funny thing is the Gilbert's gonna know more about this. Okay. See how it's gonna turn it off. Almost there. You see how dark it is. Now, one thing I wanted to tell y'all also, before it gets real foamy, 
it does get the consistency of cottage cheese in here, so don't be alarmed when it does that. Everything's been cooked in about 30 minutes now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to transfer our onions and peppers and garlic into our roux. Yeah, we're getting a little, a little. How many? <laughs> we're adding a little other gravy we forgot to say earlier, which is um, chicken bouillon. I'll add that to the description at the bottom. It's just, instead of warning, you can add a little chicken. Stuff. Yeah, Okay. Salt and tomato sauce. And tomato paste? Do the tomato sauce first and let's see how thick it is. We're adding four cans of tomato sauce. There's a fifth can over there. Do we need that? Are there we'll like six the Okay, we're going to wait and see the color. And get burned. Mix everything together. What am I supposed to do with these? You might crumble them. I wish there was smell of vision for y'all watching the coat right now. Then we're coming with the chicken broth and bouillon. Wow. Some chicken broth uh -huh. or chicken. water with bouillon. How much right. water was that? That was two quarts. Two quarts of either water or chicken stock. Water with bouillon cubes. And I will just bring this to a bowl. And once you add that, it's going to break up, so we're kind of past that section of, you know, it possibly burning on you. Okay. 
Are you still on medium heat? No, we, we lowered it a little bit during the um, process. So now we're at, low, we're at like medium low right now. Okay, so we're going to wait for this to come to a boil. Are you right at that? Add some tomato paste to it. This just helps thicken it up and gives it a little more color. So he added about two about half tablet. a jar, yeah. like half of a can, two, two spoonfuls full. All right, well, we're going to wait for this to come to a boil and then we'll check it in. Yes. Yeah, so oh, wait, that's added, not like it. We've added a few more spoonfuls um, of... We basically fished the canned tomato paste, what we did. That's right. what we ended up doing. So right now we're just going to taste for seasoning. Okay. Okay. A little bit of Tony's. Now remember the meat has it on there. Huh? The meat has Tony's on it. I know, but we're going to... But this is our base. Should I add the onion powder, onion powder, onion powder, garlic powder too? Nah. Okay. Wait, it still hasn't come to a bowl, so no, we're just, just still waiting. And just to tell you again what we're gonna do is, once the sauce is done, we're gonna separate this. This one pile will be sausage pork, one will be sausage and chicken, and the actual meat is gonna simmer and cook in the pot. So there's not gonna be any like cooking in the pot beforehand. So that's one reason that's gonna make the meat extra tender, extra juicy. It's gonna be for a good time. And this is gonna cook in the gravy. Yes. Okay. We'll be back. Hey guys, sidebar real quick. We are having a little snack for lunch today. The true occasion, what we said earlier, Mudan. Right here, it's a rice, a thick rice dressing and hog intestine casing. Delicious. Mm. Uh -oh. I don't eat it. No, no. Yeah, I, eat <laughs> I don't it. eat it that way. Don't care. I take the casing off. So what is boudin for people that don't know? Like I said, it's kind of like a rice sausage. The best thing I could say. It's like dirty rice. Like dirty rice, but better. Like it's got a lot of stuff you don't want to know, but it's just delicious. So this is traditional boudin huh? wrapped in the casing. Mm -hmm. um, they do make boudin balls. Mm -hmm. So it would be the innards. <laughs> that are fried more in a ball form but this is Not traditional a lot of <laughs> hog tenders in there um dirty rice in a casing <laughs> okay so this is an uncased boudin so it is pork butt um there's some green onions regular onions rice the seasonings so this is kind of what it looks like. This is how I would eat it. Or if you get a boudin ball, they would take this, roll it into a ball form, dip it in the seasonings, and then fry it. Um, obviously, boudin balls <laughs> taste the best to me because the extra frying. But um, this is the casing. I, I'm not a, not a fan of that part, but regular boudin is pretty good. Oh. Okay, all right guys, we are at boiling point, which means we're gonna split. Remember, we are, we did double this because we're making two batches. And we're at boiling point, but it's literally been like an hour since we started. So this is very slow. So he's gonna break this in half. That's why we doubled the recipe, because we're gonna have one pork and sausage and then one chicken and sausage. So we're just gonna take about half transfer it to our other pot and also I have spilled but we did put a yeah, little we, tray a catch tray right there just for this reason a catchment system mm -hmm. a TJ spill proof that's pretty good okay okay so that's about half and half so what's next chef Next, where's our heat at for this, by the way? Just turn it back to low. We want to add all the meat and bring it back to a bowl. And so these are raw meats. Yep. They're going to cook in the sauce. So we're adding... This will be the chicken one over here. This is going to be our chicken and sausage. 
is already pre-seasoned with our seasoning. This looks like we had about two bags of chicken breast and then two bags of sliced sausage. Bag and a half. Okay, we're gonna put the rest over there. I come in the middle. Here's the pork, doing the same thing. That's just a whole pork loin or half pork loin. So we're just adding and stirring. So once it comes to a boil again, then is we it? let it simmer for about a half hour. Okay. You know, all of it will be cooked and nice tender and have all this delicious flavor with it. So from start to finish, this is about two hours, I would say. Correct. And if it's a little too thick, which this one looks, it's a little thick, which because we didn't roux as good and we always add a little water. So we'll let it cook for a little while and see. The one thing Ooh. while we forgot to tell y'all is even with Sibrin, Take some like this and scrape the bob because you will get some little clumps in there. You want to break that up as you're cooking. Okay. All right. We'll so see you lids, on lids back on, back to the boil. Once they boil, simmer for 30 minutes. Yep. And we are going to serve these over rice. Um, you could also serve these over cornbread. I've never tried mashed potatoes, but I'm sure that that's an option. For those of you in the north, so we're gonna add a little water to each, and we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. One thing we did do: we start cooking our rice in the middle, right here, and right now we're going to taste both pots, see where they're at. So this is the chicken and Oops, sorry. You taste pretty good. And over here. Well, my bad, my bad. What are you tasting for? Seasoning? Seasoning, yeah. This one may need a little bit. We got this to a boil right now, so we're about to drop to a simmer. Let's sit for what 30 minutes? Yes, okay. So, we're gonna put the lid on. Is the other one boiling? Let's check out the other one. Nah, it's getting there, so it's a little bit more time to get to a boil. Pork one is moving a little more slower. Yeah. I will say this one we had to season a little bit more, Tony's, just because over here the chicken was seasoned a little more heavily. So what you want is you gotta want that blend that's tomatoey taste plus a little bite to it too. So I was reading your shirt. Yeah, you know, the shirt from last show too. It's never crisp until Hot's Group falls off Dr. Toby Tower. So we're just waiting for this one to get to a boil, drop below. Once we drop below, we're gonna do about 30 minutes, let the pretty much let the meat cook and everything kind of get a little more in there. And if we get to go and also we got the rice going too. So we will see y'all in about 30 minutes. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Alright guys, welcome back. Okay, here's how you know when your meat's done. You see all the grease that has popped up on top? That's how you know that's all from the meat that shows it's cooked. The meat is actually cooked. Right now what we're doing is skimming from the top, skimming the grease out, which is... But all that fat, that's from the meat. You have adorned some gear since we saw you Yes, last. I have. We are doing Christmas cookies next. So, we always get dressed up for that. So, is it 
done. Yes, it is done. It's done. You can keep, and you'll keep getting more grease as it sits here. Just like anything with the gravy or whatever, you'll get more grease tomorrow or later on as it sits. You can see on this one over here, I scooped it. It's just more working to the top. And you don't have to get it off. It just makes it, I know this is going to sound funny, a little healthier. But even though we got two cups of flour in here and two and four sticks of butter. butter, yeah, <laughs> it's a little healthier. You can, it makes it more pleasing. Yeah, pleasing to aesthetically. the Aesthetically. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's it. So we're gonna fix a bowl and we'll kind of show you how we serve it okay. when we eat it. We'll be back soon. All right. So our sauce piquant is ready. So I just have some rice in my little bowl here. Mm. And that is it. That's it. So you see we have our chicken sausage. You can see some of the tomatoes. Very good for the cold season. How's it? Really good. Oh good. Well. We'll be back a few next time for another yes, cookie talk. Thank y'all for tuning in. Be sure to like our video, subscribe, hit that bell. Mm -hmm. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.